Paragon Trust Company and tax and private client practitioner joins us to bring a common sense approach to money in a world of total insanity. Let's welcome Tony D'Angelo. All right, the one and only Tony D is joining us uh, each and every Tuesday to chat about a number of different things. And uh, we, you know, we actually can't wait every Tuesday to hear what he's got in store for us. Tony, good morning. Good morning and proud to be among you. Can I start off by saying nature is a mother? I heard the story. <laughs> Tell everybody. Jeez. Well, anyway, to get ready for this today, I'm sitting at my table and everything's fine and the heat is on. And I heard bump. And I said, yeah, I guess something happens occasionally. Like a truck will come down the road or something. No big deal. About 10 minutes later, I hear... <laughs> And we look outside, and Lee, Elsie, and kids, this whole big tree came down right across the front porch. Wow. I mean, this this mother, excuse me, and it is so big, I'll post the pictures on this. And we were just sitting there saying, unbelievable, missed the house by five inches by the, the grace of God. I'll, uh, listen, regardless of what they tell you, nature has a mind of its own. I and got- uh, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I got to tell you, listen, we were talking a little bit about this off the air. It is one of the most helpless, scary feelings to, to be around a tree coming down. Uh, I've had, like I said, I live in the middle of sort of like, a, not wilderness, but I mean, I live with trees all around me. And they come down all the time behind me. Knock on wood, none have, have come down in the yard. But it's, it's it, first of all, it shows nature's power. Just a tree coming down. I mean, they're like 15,000 pounds, those things. A lot of them. They're even heavier than that. Yeah. It's incredible the damage that they can do, and thank God it missed your house. So I'm glad about that. That's oh, I, I am too. And as uh, Bob Lazari Sr. would say, the esteemed father to your esteemed next guest, Tony, you too can live in the country. I figured that out. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're all right, man. So you're going to have to get somebody out there to, to chop that away, right? Chop it up, drag it away, and yeah. uh, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we've got a gas stove, so uh, it'll be a ton of firewood that we can bargain back for the cutting. But, oh, good. All right. Well, that's good. All right, so listen, let's uh, let's start with the funding for Black Lives Matter. Well, I know you want to get uh, there. This is something. We don't realize how evil these people are. The National Republican Party does not understand how evil these people are. Um, Black Lives Matter, uh, if you look at it, and uh, they masquerade in this world as a charitable organization. Now, if you go and you actually pull up uh, Section 501c3 of the Internal Revenue Code, there's a very specific definition for what is a charitable organization. The biggest thing is, without writing a dissertation, you can't do anything political. Now, Black Lives Matter sort of masquerades as a charity, but yet the things they do are extremely political. Um, and, and, and that's just the way it is, whether you love them or whether you hate them. And uh, how it works is that there really is no Black Lives Matter charity. It's actually kind of owned by something known as Thousand Currents, which is a charitable organization. Thousand Currents is one of the direct feeders, when you run this thing through the tax return, of, uh, or, or one of the recipients of the uh, Soros Open Society Foundation. A couple of the others are Proteus Fund and something called Act Blue. Now, if you go to the Black Lives Matter site and say, I want to give a donation you know, to this, uh, this wonderful charity, it'll take you to something called Act Blue. Act Blue is really a, uh, how can I put it, it's a technological nonprofit with left leanings, and that's where you know, the actual money goes, so that they're so very clever at saying, well, you're contributing to a charity, and what you're doing is you're contributing to a working charity, and they're fun- funneling this thing to a highly political organization. Now, you know, the, the typical Republican mindset is, okay, we're going to keep this thing inside of the pack limits, and we're going to do this and kind of keep it above board. These guys are running rings around everybody by using, like, these little kind of spur Black Lives Matter. There's one in Oakland, California. There's another one in Maryland. And where they're so able to mobilize so very quickly is, they just kind of throw the switch. They throw the money out there. They they get the people who they pay to protest, and uh, you know it's like uh, it's like an automatic, completely skirting 
any single 501c3, well, heck, who cares about that? But uh, any political type of thing, I mean, it, uh, it is manufactured evil. You know, things like, you know, defund the police or tear down the statues. That's not charitable, but how are they able to do it? They do it by doing something like that. It is amazing. It is demonic. It is devilish. It is, it is so clever. It, I mean, and I will say this. For all the great speeches that Donald Trump can give it, uh, you know, at the conventions, and for all the charged Republican-based people, if you don't attune yourself to this, they will blow your rear end to the ground again because they're that much more sophisticated than you are. So the money goes to this entity. Yeah, go go to the website and contribute. And then it goes to like, is there one person that's in charge? And where? I guess what my question is: Where does the money go? So I want to give to Black Lives Matter because right. I, I believe in their cause, and I write them a check right. for 100 bucks. It goes so to this place. And then they do what with it, Tony? Well, they pledge on their website that they're going to give it to, quote-unquote, the justifiable causes of Black Lives Matter. So that could be, uh, like you had just said, mentioning maybe buying supplies for rallies, paying people to be at rally. I mean, what are we talking about? We have no idea, right? It, it, well, put it this way. Yeah, I, I mean, you see the cake being baked, Leo. Right. You see what they do. It goes, you know, presumably for that and whatever else that they want to do. Can I donate to Joe Biden's cause if I want to? Well, interesting you say that. Act Blue is, quote, unquote, the single largest, um, you know, funnel to the Biden uh, campaign. <laughs> Unbelievable. How, I, I mean, believe me, I could take hours trying to figure out trying to track one dollar to the other but the general whatever you want to call it the general infrastructure of this is this interweaving uh, this interweaving web of nonprofits from the largest to the smallest and again these people aren't stupid they use the large nonprofits to get down to the smaller nonprofits. Who regulates a small nonprofit? The state attorneys general. Do you think they have the wherewithal to actually police this stuff? And then again, if you're in a blue state, they're not policing anything anyway. Yes. Right, right. No, of course, they're welcoming this money. So where does, all right, so I mean, what about in a general sense? You know, you if I donate to a bo, how do I know I'm not donating to a bogus charity all the, I mean all the time? I'm, well, I think that's the case with anything. I mean, you uh, you know you could you, you could check the charity, you could look to see what's the, you, you really don't. I mean, but uh, if if anything, I think that uh, if if you're giving here, it is being used for the purposes you've intended. None of these purposes are charitable. The You know, lower legs of well, an organization. Well, it's shadowy, but you know, it, it, it does come down. It, it, you can back the thing all the way up to uh, the Soros Foundation. Hmm. You know, the the Open Society Network. Go to his site. Read what's there. Read read how the thing how it will go from uh, Open Society to Thousand Currents to the Proteus Fund. Yeah, I mean that's that. that if you're looking for Mr. Big, we found him, and oh. and he's not shy about it. He's he's, he's telling you what he's doing. How much money are we talking about? Well, it's gargantuan. I mean, I think between... I see, it says, what I got is $90 million in front of me from 2020 alone. Yeah, and that, uh, thank you for bringing that up. That's the Associated Press who said that uh, $90 million came in. I think between Proteus, um, the... Uh, <sighs> The uh, let me just see. I mean, is it an <laughs> and another one? We're probably talking about 150 million in 2018, which were the last um, tax returns posted. Uh, yeah, it's it's it, it's insane. And 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 it's not to say all the little you know mom and pop kind of you know let me send 25 dollars sure. something I believe in. But I'm just curious, is it in a bank somewhere? I mean, we got to get ninety million dollars in a bank with one guy writing checks. That's what I don't understand. I, like, what is the entity? We know, I guess. Certain charities, you know, you write a check to the Humane Society. Hopefully it goes in a, a well, bank. Well, they have bank accounts. I yeah. mean, where they hold their bank accounts and things, I mean, they know that. Yeah. I mean, uh, is, is Bank of America holding this as JPM? I don't know. Is it uh, is it UBS or, or something like that? Uh, I, we really have no idea. Yeah. I, I mean, it's uh, they can disclose to you this is my tax return, but they don't have to tell you where they're holding the money. So how do you become a 501c3 then? Oh, it's tough. 
it's tough. You have to fill out a Form 1023. You have to ask tons and tons. Of, you have to answer tons and tons of questions. Uh, you have to deal with an examiner who will literally look at your eye teeth, and then you have to register with your. Ch- it is a month. I'm, I'm doing it now uh, with several. It is a months long process, and then after you've done everything, right. uh, you've got to go out and chase money. Is- so they're not a 501c3, though, are they? Black Lives Matter is not a 501c3. Okay. It, it is absolutely positively not. Uh, there are little Black Lives Matter charities that are used as feeders, but the main organization, if you go to the website, you track that down, it says your money's going into right. Act Blue. So this is the thing. See, people who have a good heart, and there are a lot of folks out there with a great heart who think that you know they see this on television yep. and they say, oh, man, this is great, Black Lives Matter, let's... You know, let's write a check, 100 bucks, 150, 300 bucks, 500 bucks. It's got to be a great cause. Send it in and not know where this money ends up going, what it ends up, you know, doing. Is it is it fighting against police forces? Are you, you know, are they using that money to combat, what, things in courts that you may find? Well, yeah, and, and I mean, that's another thing, and we can do that next week as far as that couple, the McCloskeys in St. Louis, which is the whole zoning thing. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that, the thing in Woodbridge, Connecticut. The, the, the amount of inane, whatever you want to call it, benign non-thinking is far beyond anything here. But basically, the McCloskeys in St. Louis, uh, before they came out with the guns and the protesters, you know, and they're like, there are these accidental people. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, they were in St. Louis saying, we want to maintain single-family zoning, which, of course, is the complete, you know, anathema to anything that uh, these people want to do. They really were the target of this thing. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, it's, well, I, I can go on and we will. Interesting. Tony, as always, did I miss anything? Because that was really great. That was interesting No, I uh, believe me, it's uh, try, trying to cram it all in. But, <laughs> yeah, it's nonprofit gaslighting. 35 years of my doing this stuff, I it's it's unimaginable what these people do, and they're getting away with it. Ah, you know, I the Republican Party's really got to start thinking about, you know, you're really uh, working against manufactured evil here, and this is how they do it. And you had said to me off the air, and not to belabor this point, but, uh, you know, just be very careful with who you give your money to, because there's a lot of shady organizations out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we can go on for days about overcompensated nonprofit mm-hmm. people and how they use things, and, uh, and, 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 and. Your regulation is, you know, at the state attorney general level, and uh, they, they just don't have the juice to fight something like this. They, they just really don't. Tony, great stuff as always. I appreciate it, buddy. My pleasure. All right, man. Hey, everybody. You too.